A Marmite character, you may say. Either way, I have no care, for I know my value in the pages of history. Were it not for I, the Tudors that you are all so obsessed with simply would not exist. Mayhap you favour me a little more now. My birth at Bledsoe, my mother, Margaret Beauchamp's ancestral home on the 31st of May is undisputed. I would later order it remembered at Westminster Abbey so all could rejoice in the date of my birth. The year though is a little unclear, either 1441 or 1443. I favour the latter. I was the heiress to a considerable fortune and more importantly, inheritor of my father's claim to the throne. John Beaufort, Duke of Somerset, was the legitimised grandson of John of Gaunt and Catherine Swinford. Note the use of an important word here, legitimised. My father had negotiated my wardship to Henry VI in the event he should perish on the French campaign he led at the time of my birth. Tragically, he was charged with treason on his return, though his guilt was never ascertained, him dying before facing trial. Yet, with an alleged disgraced father, my wardship was given to the first Duke of Suffolk, William de la Pole, albeit I remained with my pregnant mother. My lands, however, were placed at his disposal. My sibling did not survive, yet I was not without kin. Five half-siblings from my mother's first marriage, all of whom I would later have the opportunity to help support. Suffolk betrothed me to his son. I was just one year old. This required a papal dispensation as we were closely related. A calculated and cunning manoeuvre on his part to get his hands on my inheritance and to add weight to his own claim to the English throne. This foam marriage, it was dissolved, therefore it never existed to my mind, nor was it recognised in canon law. And so my wardship was once more passed, this time to Henry's half-brothers, Edmund and Jasper Tudor. Edmund had been named heir designate in the event the king had no issue, which was a sensible plan considering his already tenuous claim to the throne. These brothers were the sons of their joint mother, the Dowager Queen Catherine of Valois and Owen Tudor. Henry saw me as a good match for Edmund, albeit he was 12 years my senior. Our union would strengthen his claim. Age nine, I was considered of an age to assent to the marriage, which I did so of my own volition. I felt divinely guided to do so. And so three years later, we were wed just as the Wars of the Roses had begun. My husband, a Lancastrian, was swiftly taken prisoner by Yorkists and held at Carmarthen Castle. Here he died of the plague. I was 13, a widow and pregnant. My brother-in-law Jasper took me into his care at Pembroke Castle. And on the 28th of January, 1457, I was delivered of a son whom I named Henry for the king. His birth was far from easy. At 13 and of such a tiny frame, my body was neither physically mature nor equipped for the vigours of pregnancy and the trauma of childbirth. It was generally considered a miracle that he was born at all of so little a personage. Oh, I felt this only too well. 
the hand of God had guided that child from me, the experience can, it can only be described as the deepest, darkest depths of hell and fraught with such danger. It is of little wonder that many women breathe their last in such horrific work. It would leave me scarred, physically and mentally. My work here was done. There would be no further child from this womb. Yet, I felt this a rite of passage, a, a trial, a test of my faith, and I knew this level of suffering was the price that had to be paid for greatness. It would later become apparent this was only the first of many battles I would fight in the war to come. My very reason for being was now clear. God had shown me my path and I set a mission. There would be no price too high to deliver my child, Henry, to his destiny.